Make sure to use our code CLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flip Side for another episode of the Prospect List. Let's go ahead and get our list started. At number 15, we have Exiles number two, the one in 10 variant. Okay, so uh, in this book, um, we see the first cameo um, of Sharon Carter as Captain America. Um, we know that issue number three has been really, really hot, um, both Cabaret and, um, and the ratio. Um, this one, we get a look at the character um, a little bit earlier, a relatively undervalued, underappreciated book. Um, this book got hot a little while ago because what we also have in this, and you can see her front and center, is the first appearance of um, Tessa Thompson's version of Valkyrie. And um, uh, so when this book got hot in the past, it was really driven by that. Uh, but it made the list this week because of that cameo of Peggy Carter's cap. At number 14, we have Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas, Zero Journeys, number one, cover B. So this book was submitted by Tony, Blue Green Artifacts, and it was a low print Tokyo Pop release. This is the first series at effort at an original story in the universe since the movie. With Disney, a sequel is inevitable. And this is a possible source material for the run. You know, with Nightmare Before Christmas, this is popular in two different seasons, Halloween and Christmas. And those fans are ravaged. They'll line up for anything for the series. And, you know, once you become a Nightmare Before Christmas fan, it's hard to break away from that series. And so it has a huge cult following and it never seems to die down in popularity. So great pick, Tony. At number 13, we have... Adventures into the Fear, number 11. This is the first appearance of the Nexus of All Realities. Knowing that Man-Thing is MCU canon, speculating on this major multiversal access point is a good idea, especially with Doctor Strange 2 on the way. We have Man-Thing, of course, blowing up his keys, Man-Thing 1. Then you have his first appearance. And then um, and the Scarlet Witch, Witch series, um, Agatha Harkness does tease that you don't know what you have just done to Scarlet Witch. And uh, I also had thought that I've been out there vocal about um, Lore as a, uh, a good character um, to chase. She's a Nexus being that, um, that could come into play. So uh, look out for uh, Scarlet Witch number four, first appearance of Lore. At number 12, we have Marvel Megaverse Spider-Man number one. I, I love this book. I, I, I think this book has so much potential to grow. Uh, there's only 58 copies on, on the CGC census. I think there's only like 20 something graded in the nine, eight. Uh, you got to believe that this could be in play for uh, the next spider verse uh, animated uh, movie. I mean, they, they brought in every kind of Spider-Man character. This, uh, as far as with manga as being as hot it is, as it is, I, I, I think it's in play. The artwork is is fantastic. I think it's a Car, uh, Carrie Andrews. So this book came out in 2002, and it looks like art for right now. This book, like, it looks current. You know, it's just a spectacular cover. So I think there's a lot of room to grow with this book, and I think it is so criminally undervalued. Yeah, I, I, I'll second that, um, uh, Joe. I love this, and I love the follow-up miniseries to this. One of my all-time favorite reads um, that introduces a lot of manga versions of other um, uh, Marvel characters like Daredevil and Black Cat. Um, so this is a fun pick. And um, in the miniseries that follows us up is is brilliant. Um, check it out if, you, if you're looking for a good read. It, 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 it's a it's a tough book to get in a high grade be, just because of that brown cover. Uh, any little nick sticks out like a, a like a, like a black cover. I mean, it uh, the white from any kind of spine tick sticks out like like crazy. So if you find one in a high grade, I mean, you're pretty lucky. There's not many out there. And contact Joe, so he'll press a 9-8 for you. <laughs> At number 11, we have 
Defenders number 84. And I'd like to take this time to welcome one of our newest members to the Modern uh, Playbook team, Chris Colbert. Glad to be here. Um, so yeah, Defenders 84, first fight between Namor and the Black Panther. This is kind of a no-brainer at this point. All signs point towards um, Namor debuting in Black Panther 2 as the antagonist. Um, this is a great opportunity to get your hands on a Bronze Age, um, you know, super minor key. This book can be had for under $20 in most cases. This is going to be found in most comic book shops, back issue bins. So, yeah, it's an easy score for somebody who's out digging. So, highly recommend getting your hands on it before uh, that that's leak or rumor becomes confirmed and this book becomes a hundred dollar book keep your eye out for mark jeweler inserts oh well yeah yeah book. um yeah this book did see a bump but it's back down and i would actually with everything that's going on with the mcu i, I actually think it's a it's a moderate key as well and a good pickup at its current yeah. price point nice play at number 10 we have a viewer submission from rob's comics uh robert for him he submitted Secret Warriors number one. So he submitted all three of these covers, the Nakayama variant, the Del Alfonso incentive hip hop variant, and the Robbie Rodriguez incentive variant. Uh, what Rob wrote to me was, I believe that Quake, Kamala, and the Mar Marvel Rising cast has al already showing up in animation only piece. The only piece that's left is Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. Secret Warriors is going to be a new wave of kid heroes. These variants are tough to get in higher grade, uh, especially the hip hop cover, which is the uh, Migos variant. It's all, also an all black cover. Yeah, these are uh, these are fun books for sure. That that Nakayama um, is really sharp. I really do like that. I know that's probably the easiest to get of the bunch, um, um, but uh, a, a really sharp one and. You know, we we're, we're we're seeing signs of all of these characters showing up um, in the MCU. Quake, obviously, is in Agents of Shield, which isn't really canon, but you know, there's been talk of that actress reprising the role. Kamala Khan we're getting, and then we're getting Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur in an animated sh series. So, uh, th this book seems like a pretty smart play for sure. And if you have any other submissions, you can hit up any of us on Instagram or leave a comment below on the video. At number nine, we have Venom, the custom edition, AMC edition, number one. Okay, so I believe this was a giveaway at AMC, AMC Theaters. This is the first Sony-verse uh, appearance of the uh, Tom Hardy Venom, she Venom, and also Mrs. Chen, who... Uh, we have a lot of comedic scenes at the convenience store with Venom. Um, I like this book a lot, um, not just because of it's a because it's a photorealistic cover of Tom Hardy as Venom. It's also done by Scan, and a lot of people bailed on ASM 300 and Venom when this movie came out, but the cult following just kept pressing and pressing, and there's been a. Uh, um, since then, that cult following has been uh, hitting the, uh, the the comic back issue market with all Venom. Venom is raging hot, and um, it looks like the trailer is going to be really, really good for the second uh, Venom movie. I really like this book. Um, I don't think there were any toys that came out. There's not many collectibles that uh, came out with this Venom movie. So here it is. Um, a great book for people who love the Sony vs. Venom uh, property. Yeah, I mean, promo comics are always smart plays, to be honest, um, um, to grab. You can usually find them relatively cheaply, but they're tough and high grade because a lot of them are, are just given to people who don't care and destroyed. And, uh, you know, it's savvy to pick them up when you see them, regardless of, of what they are. But, uh, yeah, I like this one, Phil. At number eight. We have the Flash Gordon number one Cerebral Palsy Association giveaway cover. All right, this is uh, this is Topher's book, right? Classic Topher book, and uh, you know our second promotional comic. Um, you know this one came out you know well before I think most of us were were born on this panel, right? Back in 1968, 
Um, but you know, with the Flash Gordon movie coming out or supposedly coming out at some point, um, uh, you know, this book uh, might be a, a, a nice one to pick up. Um, you know, that said, this is not particularly easy to find. Um, you know, pretty hard to come by. Um, so if you see it out there, uh, pick it up. Um, you'll be happy you did. At number seven, we have Young Avengers number twelve. So yeah, this was another one of my picks. Um, first appearance of Speed. It's a debated first naming of Kate Bishop as Hawkeye. Take that for what you will. Um, so this week, uh, footage um, leaked of actor Julian DeBaker auditioning for the role of Tommy. Um, it was his um, footage that he sent out to Marvel Studios. Whether or not he got the role is neither here nor there, but they are actively casting for the teenage version of Tommy, which means that it's only a matter of time before we see that individual in live action. Um, 9.8 of this book haven't left the building yet. Raw copies can still be had for in the $40 to $50 range. If you can do some magic with some pressing, you probably got a fighting chance at a 9.8. This is definitely a book that you want to get your hands on because, I mean, let's face it, Young Avengers number one is kind of out of here. At number six, we have Deadpool number 65. All right, Deadpool number 65. Um, this book comes courtesy of our main man, Mercenot. Uh, check out his channel if you're not watching it. I watch it on Endless Loop. This is um, a classic uh, Deadpool cover, um, a book that I have, uh, have loved for a long time. Uh, and frankly, one of the first books I picked up when I started getting back into comics, and this really got me into the character. Um, there's a few things going on for this book. Outside of the beautiful cover... Um, by Udon, and uh, the rest of the series features, um, you know, other amazing covers. Um, uh, you also have a couple of appearances inside, the first appearance of Agent X and the first appearance of Outlaw, um, who's a cowgirl, and she features heavily in that Agent X run that's on the tail end of, of this Deadpool run. Um, but, but this cover alone um, is really a modern gem. Should probably feature on our next bangers list. To be perfectly honest with you, but uh, you know, it's really great pick by Mercenot and uh, and a book that I'm happy to have just found in newsstand, which I wasn't sure it even existed. I was just going to ask you, Ben. Hey, does, have you seen this in newsstand yet? Nice, very nice pickup. Yeah, I, I first time I'd ever seen it. <laughs> That's a good one, gold mine. And with books on this run, like. This is towards the end of the run, too. So, like, I feel like a lot of the prints are lower count, like, yeah. when you get towards the end of the, uh, especially of this run, you know, this is like in 97. So, or 99 yeah, no, by this point. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I, I've looked them up in the past. I want to say they're sort of in that sort of high 20, low 30,000 print run range, which, which isn't huge by any means. Well, I, I was just going to ask Ben, you know, the fact that Taika Waititi is, is you know, especially that commercial with uh, Ryan Reynolds as Deadpool, like, you, you got to think that, that something's in play right now. I mean, he just finished doing this, uh, Ryan Reynolds finished doing this uh, Dead, Deadpool-esque uh, uh, movie, and it's almost kind of, uh, in my opinion, a, a kind of way to... Uh, you know, buy some time for him before he becomes uh, Deadpool. But you got to think it. Yeah, I mean, listen, every, every, everybody outside of maybe New Mutants '98, um, everybody's sleeping on Deadpool stuff right now. Um, yeah. And um, it, this is the time to be grabbing it because when when he hits the MCU, uh, it's going to be big, and they're not just going to be a one and done with a property that huge. Um, they're they're going to go with it, and I think it's going to be absolutely massive so i i, I just got the, a funny feeling like he could pop up in any movie that he wants to almost like stan lee you kind of did like the way deadpool just uh pops up on variant covers and things like that i think that's in play for him just to just to be like driving a school bus or working at at a hospital yeah i mean there are a lot of people who speculate on that and i think it makes a lot of sense um that we see the character, you know, in some capacity that way. But uh, yeah, I, I'd be grabbing a lot of a lot of his books. But th th this book stands on its own as one of his coolest covers, um, outside of some of some really really difficult variants. And yeah, uh, a modern classic in my mind. At number five, we have Marvel Premiere number forty-seven. 
So this once again is another one of my picks. If you probably haven't realized, I'm very big on the uh, the TV and movie spec, and uh, this is the first appearance of Darren Cross, aka the Yellow Jacket villain, um, has been confirmed to be returning for Ant Man three. Um, this was a book that you know, generally speaking, was slept on by most um, for whatever reason. People, you know, haven't really been you know chasing this book, so. It's a great opportunity to get in on a you know a multiple first appearance book um or you know first ant-man um as you know scott lane ant-man as well um so yeah like this is a great book to get you know put in your holster and have waiting for another year or two from now when quantum Manium releases yeah i thought this was a great pick too i was very high on it um i know my our partner ben is also likes this book a lot um you know I think the Darren Cross angle is is fresh, and that's a, that's a that's a good way of looking at it. But I mean, you know, the let's just get down to facts. I mean, it, it's the cover, it's the guts, it's Scott Lang becoming Ant Man in costume. Um, Avengers one eighty one is your first appearance of Scott Lang, but not the Ant Man. He becomes the Ant Man in this book, just to add with Cassie Lang and. Um, Darren Cross, I mean, that's a triple spec book and it's still affordable. I mean, there were a few nine, eight sales recently on the secondary market for, uh, about an average of about $1,500, which, which is kind of high, but to me for a vintage classic book that you could find in Mark, uh, excuse me, Mark Jewelers insert edition or what have you triple spec, solid characters in the MCU and future next gen character. I think this is a no-brainer, and I think it's that we have not seen the ceiling. I think it was a great pick, Chris. Yeah, one other thing I'd say about um, Paul Rudd as Ant-Man is it seems like he's going to one of the handful of characters who's going to have a huge role in sort of the, the the original phases of the MCU, but also likely to play a big role in the upcoming phases. And I think this book's been underappreciated, and I think this could become a major, major key. Um, you know, down the road as we really appreciate that character. And it's been a fantastic character in the movies, in my opinion, a fantastic character. You know, and you got to appreciate the, you know, Bob Layton art, you know, he, he drew all the iron, a uh, lot of the Iron Man. And uh, the, this Ant-Man cover is, 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 is no exception. I, it's just, uh, this cover has been uh, duplicated many times uh, in homage covers. And uh, it, it is, it's so fresh, uh, even for, you know, you got to look, this book was in what, 1979. Um, it's so fresh and different, you know, the magnifying glass and you see him riding a, a riding a, <laughs> it's, I mean, it's so great. And that's what they did with Anthony. With the, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's what they, you know, did with the movie. It's surprising. This book is as affordable as it is. And I'm not complaining, you know, this is the right time to buy that book. I mean, possibly Ant Man is what launches the Fantastic Four with the, uh, the, the, the uh, what's the movie, uh, the Quantum, uh, what is it? Quantum Mania. Quantum, Quantum, Quantum Mania. Mania. Yeah. So, um, I mean, I, th this book is cheap. That's all I got to say. It's cheap. And and I've been hearing that Quantum Mania could could be an end game type MCU movie. So. Yeah, I, I think it was a great play, and and I like the triple spec angle. I, I like the 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 word triple spec. You know, that sounds expensive. <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you like it more than in the guts? <laughs> <laughs> triple spec in the guts, baby. <laughs> I feel like this this cover is very iconic. I, but... It is iconic. <laughs> <laughs> and and um, for Ant Man, um, it's got to be iconic. Coming in at number four, we have Deadly Hands of Kung Fu, number 19. All right, so this is the first appearance of White Tiger. There's speculation that this character is going to make appearance in the tournament seen in Shang-Chi. Uh, there's two different White Tigers. There's a male version and a female. The female version is in, uh, I believe, Avengers Academy uh, number 20, which is also a cheap play and, and a good book. This book specifically is super hard to find in uh, high grade. It is a oversized magazine book. 
So even getting a very fine um, is, I mean, you got to treat that like treasure, you know? Um, so this is a good play. The martial arts spec, like the universe for martial arts, right, is, is opening up, okay? We just can't be at uh, Agents of New Atlas, okay? There's other... Um, other Asian, other martial art characters that are original to the uh, Marvel Universe that we should chase. And this is one of the great early ones, um, Hector Ayala. Um, he's Puerto Rican. And, uh, you know, I, I from people that I've seen at the con, they really like this character. And, uh, and if it happens, it'll be great. If it's the female version, Ava, that'll be awesome too. But a uh, great pick. Uh, maybe this was Mercer not that picked it, but this is an awesome play. I love Wouldn't the it be great if, if Iron Earth Fist team. fought in the tournament? In that yeah, tournament, it's not that, that that guy from the yeah. From the, yeah. yeah I would just die. I would die. <laughs> this, this, so cool. I, I believe this was actually Josh's pick, but I, if I'm not mistaken. Josh. Oh, Shout okay. Josh. Cool. Nice one, Josh. Josh. Josh Allen. Yeah. For our number three book, we have Avengers versus X Men number seven. So this is uh, another one of my picks, and once again, it is a film, you know, speculation pick. Uh, this is the first, uh, or this is where the Atlanteans declare war on the Wakandans, and Namor floods their capital city. Um, there have been a bunch of set leaks that point to the death of T'Challa and the war with the Atlanteans. Um, I mean, this is a dollar bin book. Let's be real about it. Like, th this is a book that you could easily go flip through back issue bins and find potentially even for 50 cents or a quarter. Um, and you have the potential to make some real substantial money off of this if you play it smart. Um, I am big on Black Panther. I'm very bullish on Black Panther spec right now. Um, go get those books. There's a, a variant cover, too, that's pretty awesome. I, uh, have you guys seen the cover of that? But there's a, there's a, a variant out there for round seven. Um, I mean, uh, I think there are variants of this that are that are like partial sketches. Yeah, the there's a partial thing. sketch, and then there's a there's a newsstand too. The variant is Esad Rivik. Uh, it's a one in twenty five. No, oh, that's going to be beautiful. Yeah, it is. It, it it's got a uh, Hawkeye in the cover. I bet. For our number two book, we have. Invincible Iron Man number 120. So this is another one of my books. Um, it is the first appearance of Justin Hammer. Um, that name might sound familiar because you might remember him from Iron Man 2. Um, like Hammer is one of the quintessential protagonists of the Armor Wars. If that sounds familiar, it should because Armor Wars has been confirmed for Disney+. Plus. Um, also, a um, little bit deeper, we have a Roxxon exec uh, J of Jonas Hall or Hale making an appearance in this book. Though that character may not matter, uh, we've already had Roxxon uh, Corporation um, brought into MCU canon with Loki. Uh, this is also a Namor cover. I mean, this this is firing on all cylinders at this point. Like this is this is definitely still a cheap book to get your hands on. But I think it will be one that will be very substantial once we get a little bit closer to the Armor Wars. Plus, you know, Sam Rockwell playing Justin Hammer. I believe he's reprising the role, correct? Yep. Mm -hmm. He's one of my oh. favorite actors. I mean, I, I, if he is reprising the role, good job, MCU. Yeah. Oh, and one last thing. This is also uh, issue one of the Demon in a Bottle story arc. So, yep. yeah, this is kind of, I mean... If, if we still care about what happens in the actual, like in the guts of a story like this, this is kind of one of those books you want to have, you know, in your collection. Yeah. And it's a more Bob Layton, uh, Bob Layton goodness, you know, I mean, just spectacular cover. Uh, uh, one of those covers that is uh, underappreciated, just uh, the classic red Iron Man bold uh, in the title and the white background is just amazing. Soon to be a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. And Bob's a pleasure to meet. <laughs> So if you get a chance to beat them, do it. And for our number one book this week, we have Black Panther number two, volume four. This is a no-brainer. Black Panther 2, um, you know, 2005. You have your first appearance of Shuri, which you all know is T'Challa's sister, and which 
becomes Black Panther in the 2009 Black Panther series, limited series one through 12 and issue number five in story. Um, she's on a few covers of issue one, but she actually does not become Black Panther until issue number five. This is actually her first appearance. And this book is very important. There's not a ton of these out there, but it's also not low in, in print run or ordered by retailers in the sense that, you know, this book was ordered to the tune of around 47,000 by retailers. And there is newsstand copies. I used to own one and my friend Ben bought it from me. So yeah, I am confirmed on that. Um, my friend Chris has a few things to update us on the Black Panther movie. I'd like him to uh, take the floor right now. Sure. So again, this was uh, another one of my picks as well. Um, there has been even more information that is slowly leaking out as well that ultimately uh, the Black Panther 2 movie will play more of a battle of the cow type of approach to it where the whole movie will be who will take over the moniker of the Black Panther. But in the end, it will more than likely be in the hands of Shuri. We here at Tales from the Flipside are on pretty good authority that that will be how that will play out. Um, so at $800 98 right now, who knows where the ceiling could be for um, her taking over the moniker of the Black Panther going forward. This could easily be a $1,500 book before it's all said and done, if not higher. Highly recommend um, if you've got the scratch to spend on it that you pick you up, yourself up a copy now. And if you want to risk it, buy a raw, put it in the hands of a qualified presser and see what happens. I will add that um, this is a tough book in high grade. I haven't seen the census, so I don't know, know the numbers. But I've had multiple copies of the book, including, like I said, the newsstand copy. This is a tough book in high grade because of this this indigo or red right here. Yeah. For some reason, I always see spine ticks or spine stress in that area. So, you, you can see a play. tick on the, on the bottom of this picture. You can see a tick right there on the bottom of the picture. That's how tough this cover is. <laughs> you know, if, if a nine, nine eight should carry a premium just because of the pain in the ass it is to press. Well, I want to thank everyone for watching the uh, Pro Spec List. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe our channel so you can catch all our great content. And uh, we'll catch you on the flip side. Um, um, you can't um, edit this. Um, <laughs> I'm not going um, to. <laughs> um, uh, 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 All right. Uh, uh, iconic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was nine ums. You got to cut that. I know. Yeah. Sorry.